Welcome to the United States Department of Delusion. This is Miss Mary Lightweather, and tonight we are joined with Miss Sally Snowfeather. And we are here specifically tonight because we want to take a moment, just like President Biden is doing in the White House, to wish all our Jewish families around the world a very blessed, prosperous, overcoming, self-sacrificing, honorable, healthy, happy, hopeful, and joyous New Year. We also want to wish all the Israelis, the Middle Eastern version of the collective global Jewish family, a Shana Tova U Metukha and Hag Sameach. Miss Lightweather, why did you address the Jews and the Israelis separately? Miss Snowfeather, that is an excellent question. She always asks such good questions. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, Israelis are not the typical diaspora Jew. Nope, not at all. They don't have the nasally New York accent. <laughs> no, not at all. And they don't hate Trump. No, they don't hate Trump. And they are not particularly religious. Well, they don't have a lot of money either, <laughs> most of them. There's a few, I think there's only 46,000 millionaires in Tel Aviv. Okay, anyways, uh, and they don't carry a chip on their shoulder. They get it out aggressively. They just let you know right, right at the moment what they're thinking. You know, so they're a little pushy, yeah, they are, but they're so warm and they're so caring. Mm -hmm. And they have no clue how to drive. Did you ever notice that? They And they don't even know how to form a line. <laughs> Everything just funnels into something. And you never know when they're gonna stop on the street. They don't move to the right or to the left. They just stop wherever they're at. And yes, it causes people collisions, not just car collisions. So uh, they're the only real community with such nachis that they'll push you out of the way in one minute and extend a helping hand at the exact same time. And Israelis create. They are creators. So many things. They're not your typical tailor or doctor or veterinarian. They are just inventors and salespeople. In fact, Miss Snowfeather, have you ever seen an Israeli at a kiosk in an American mall? You know, they're selling the face creams the, and the, all the hair, the hair and curling irons. I gotta tell you, they get me every time. You cannot believe the drawers of stuff I have from the, from the mall. Yep, that's the fact. That is an Israeli. And a last thing I wanna share about them. They are politicians. Every Israeli is a politician. Well, or a military leader, general, commander, but they all are involved in the nation. And last, I think I've already lasted like three times, but they are about drama. It's all about the drama. They love to sing. They love to dance and they love to create news. So this is why I mentioned Israeli separately, Miss Snowfather. Well, you are right, Miss Lightweather. They are different. So, but what are the qualities of the diaspora Jews then? Oh God, don't get me started, Miss <laughs> Snowfather. First of all, we're diaspora Jews. We're funny. <laughs> Very funny. Diaspora Jews are funny. That that is true. But now they also chavetch. They chavetch all the time. In fact, things can be going really well, and they are just leaving trails of kvetches. 
And sometimes they are funny dressers. Uh, in fact, sometimes they dress like they're just perpetually going to, to a funeral, you know, all in black. Okay, a little bit funny dressers, but I think the one thing that they're known for, diaspora Jews, it's the bagel locks and schmear. I can't, I can't what, what else? I mean, not to mention we've got gefilte fish, sweetbreads, tongue. All right, these are biggies and egg cream, yep. And I have to tell you, growing up in Chicago, there was this restaurant called The Whistler. We used to go there all the time. So that's where we go for our matzo ball soup, and we, we you know, this is where we go. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, there was always the group. The group of the little old women, Jewish matriarchs. Yep, those Jewish matriarchs. And at The Whistler, they would have this amazing bread basket, you know, bagels, uh, onion rolls, all, oh, it was delicious. And inevitably, if you were sitting near one of those tables, they were the bread hijackers. Yep, they'd open up those big purses they had and just dump the thing in and then put it on the table and the waitress would come by and fill it up again. <laughs> They are the bread hijackers. That really does happen in diaspora Jewry. So, um, and the last thing, well, you know, I'm all these, I'm the last thing that just keeps going. Yeah. But that is the, not to forget the S and R word. Now, don't let me forget that. Because the S and R words, they are the cradle of diaspora Jewry. Yep, and they exist in every living room of a diaspora Jew. Ms. Lightweather, what are the SNR words? Oh, well, Miss Snowfeather, I am shocked that the voice of the Department of Truth, who is a Jew, by the way, <laughs> she doesn't know what the SNR words are. Mm -hmm. So would you like to take a guess, Miss Snowfeather? Are those the green stamps? that everybody collected in the 60s? Oh no, no, those are S and H stamps. No, Miss Snowfeather. S and R refers to study and read. That's all diaspora Jews do. They just study and they read. So you say, you know, to your husband, your wife, your significant other, you say, anyways, do you want to go out? No, I have to go study. Can you talk? No, I'm right in the middle of a Daniel Silva book. You know, the other woman. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's how I feel. I always feel like I'm the other woman to the one who's reading. Would you like to watch a movie? No, I'm studying the news. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? I'm reading Torah, Tanakh, Talmud, Rashi, Rambam, Rickles, <laughs> Silva, Grisham, Spielberg, Aristotle, and I'm actually studying right now ancient coin theory. <laughs> Haven't you noticed this is the real, uh, you know, the real nachis of the diaspora Jew? But do the Israelis have a lot of books? Don't the Israelis have a lot of books too? Oh, well, before I touch on that, Miss mm -hmm. Snowfeather, I gotta, I got I, I forgot to tell everybody about what diaspora Jews don't have. All right, I really, I forgot. Do you know that they don't have tchotchkes? They do not have humble figurines sitting on their shelves. <laughs> no, they have books, Miss Snowfeather, books. It's kind of like the movie, How to Train a Dragon. Yeah, I'll make the connection, don't worry. You know, if you ever saw How to Train a Dragon, it opens up like this. It's all about Burke, which is this island, right? And it says, you know, everything about Burke is just beautiful and perfect, but there's only one problem, it's the pests. So most places have mice and mosquitoes, but we have dragons. Well, most homes, especially non-Jewish homes outside of Israel, most homes have trinkets and TV guides, but not us. We have books. <laughs> I mean, a lot of books. So when you ask, do Israelis have a lot of books? All right, Miss. Uh, snow feather. Uh, not really. Not really. Now, I do have friends that are Israeli, Israeli, like Sabra Israeli, and they have rooms of books. Yeah, rooms. But that's not typical. 
Uh, however, because, and the reason is, Israelis live out their faith. <laughs> Diaspora Jews, they read about it. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> oh, it's studying too. I mean, study and read, study and read. All right. Mom is snow feather. Do you think we should wish our viewers a Shana Tova Umetcha? Before we do that, shouldn't we talk a little bit about the holiday of Rosh Hashanah? Shouldn't we mention that Sunday night begins the Jewish month of Tishri and the Jewish New Year? Uh, 5783 5783 we're getting old <laughs> 5783 should, we, should we mention that we celebrated by eating sweet challah with raisins shaped like a crown and that we have fish heads and pomegranates and apples and honey cake and more uh, delicious entries. Oh, you know what she just said? More delicious entries? Here, here's what it really is. Lots of honey cake, like honey cake, honey cake, honey cake. Everywhere you go, it's honey cake. <laughs> in fact, tomorrow morning, what am I gonna do the first thing I get up in the morning? I'm going to be walking down to Mea Sharim because there's a place that makes a spelt honey cake. A honey cake. So, it's all about the honey cake. Okay. So absolutely, Miss yeah. Snowfeather, I think we should also mention that on uh, Rosh Hashanah, we sound the shofar. In fact, Rosh Hashanah day, it is mandatory that we blow the shofar 100 times. And the key is that it's all about the book. Mm. In fact, Hashem, on Rosh Hashanah opens up the book. I mean, we got books, but he has the book, mm -hmm. the book of life and the book of deeds. Yeah, the nations, this is, this is their time and he, they get all the accounting, just Foo! what's going on in Germany? Foo! You know, let's take up an accounting. How did they treat the Jews this year? How do they keep in the Abrahamic covenant down there? What's going on? Well, yep, that's what's happening. Uh, so this was what begins on a serious note. It begins the 10 days of awe. And they are very, very special days. Hashem draws close to us and we have the privilege and the honor to draw close to Hashem and rid ourselves of one full year of sin and transgressions and iniquities. Uh, well, okay, back. So we begin the 10 days uh, celebrating the birth of the earth and of humanity. This is the beginning of the civil new year, and we end those 10 days with repentance. Now you might think we're repenting for all the celebrating we're doing at the beginning of the 10 days, but no, we are coming before Hashem and really, um, really as a, as a nation, a global nation, we're coming before Hashem and entreating Him to remember us favorably for the next year. So on the Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement, we fast, uh, no food, no water, and uh, we spend the day entreating Hashem to forgive all of our sins and that He may judge us favorably and decree blessing, health, prosperity, and peace for the new year. Is that about right, Miss uh, Snowfeather? Was there anything you'd like to add? Yes, Miss Lightweight, and that about covers it. But I have to tell you, I think it's particularly important that the U.S. Department of Delusion makes the Shuva too and turns its heart to Hashem. Your progressive, progressive policies are not pleasing to Hashem. They are so surely run, running the U.S. amok. You're right, Miss Snowfeather. <laughs> we are a bit delusional here at the U.S. Department of Delusion. And on the progressive side of things. But I will take your observation seriously. 
But as always, Miss No Feather, the U.S. Department of Truth is here to keep us in check. <laughs> always, Miss No Feather. So what are your plans tonight, Miss No Feather? <sighs> well, I'm going home to read a book while my husband is out studying. Oh, wow, wow, Miss No Feather, it sounds like such a Jewish thing to do. Yeah, I want to know about you, Miss Lightweather. Well, I'm going to do the same with a little bit of lox and bagels and schmear. Oh. You know, I'm going to have a little nash with my book. I'm reading oh. Daniel Silva's book, The New Girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm doing tonight. Yeah, yeah real exciting. Mm. Uh, so, um, I think Miss Snowfeather, I think we should wish everyone in our amazing Jewish family together. Together, I think we should do it together. Okay. Wishing okay. Everyone, Everyone in, in our, our amazing, amazing Jewish family, family in Israel and around the world, and, and our non-Jewish friends, Shana Tova. May Hashem grant you joy, happiness, abundance, and peace this coming new year. From our house to yours, Happy New Year. Thank you visiting the Department of Delusions Rosh Hashanah Special. Good